Hello, I'm Clive Gidney from clivegidneyphotography.com, Photography Made Simple. Now, I've been running some workshops each week for photographers who can't get to their local camera clubs whilst we've got this COVID virus keeping us all at home. And one of the questions that we've been asked is, what's the best lens for landscape photography? So the other night, we did a session on landscapes and I got my brother, Adrian, who lives up in the Lake District and does some great landscape photography to talk to us a bit about what lenses he uses in what situations and what he finds best. So I thought I would just share that bit of that workshop with you and I hope you find it useful. So um, let's pass over to you. If you want to talk a bit in, uh, in sort of general terms and tell us how you approach landscape photography and what, what the magic formula is, if there is one. <laughs> um, um, and then we can perhaps have a look at some people's images. And if anybody wants any advice on uh, anything, then we'll see how we're doing for time. Um, Clive was talking last week and Martin was talking about wedding photography and they were talking all about light. And... Um, <clears throat> Of course, with the, the portrait stuff and the weddings, um, most of the light they're using, um, then pr they're providing themselves. Whereas um, landscape photography, people think, oh yeah, you just go out and shoot the landscape, whatever you're looking at. But the light is, I would say, probably the second most important thing. Um, your first most important thing is, your, is the scene you're looking at, the composition. But the second most important thing is is the light and um, what you do with it. And uh, often people just, they turn up, get the bag out, get the tripod out, bang it down, take the shot and then go, you know. Whereas um, Julian Calverley, who's a, a professional product photographer for, amongst other things, Land Rover and Barber and a few things, I went, I listened to a talk by him and he was saying he was at Elgol on Sky once and uh, he was there in the same spot for about four hours, um, just watching the light changing. Um, so I think for me, uh, the light is, is probably um, one of the most important things in making the best, the best of the light. Um, the other thing people often ask is, is what's the best lens for landscape photography? And I, I, I brought some pictures or I've got some pictures um, just to quickly whiz through different lenses and what you can do with them. So different lenses, um, I would say one of the most versatile lenses you can use is a, is a kit lens or a 24-70. This is um, oh, wow. seen the shot. Um, I don't know, but hopefully you can see I've left the, um, the settings up in the top left of the yeah, screen. Yeah, we can see that. Know. Depends how big your screen is, whether you can read that or not. Um, if I get rid of that, might make it a little bit easier to see. Um, so this is a shot with a 24-70 at 38mm kit lens. That's bang in the middle of your kit lens, um, uh, focal length. Um, and I think just on that, I'd, for those that are not using full frame sensors, that's... Um, sort of 18 to 55 mil on a, on a crop sensor. Yeah, or 12 to uh, 35 or 12 to 40 if you're on a, like on a thirds, um, yeah. micro four thirds. Um, but a lot of uh, kit lenses are generally what, sort of 18, 55 on a crop sensor. Yep. Um, so, you know, ideal for, for landscape photography. Um, here's another one, this is shot a bit wider, 24 mil. Um, or, or the wider end of your kit lens that's um, nice point on sky. Um, one thing I like about that image is the way the, um, let me just try this, if I do that. No, that's not done it. Um, the rocks on the bottom left hand corner kind of mirror the shape of the, um, of the peninsula going out, which I quite liked, which is uh, why I included those but um shot at the wider end again um again another 2470 but this is shot at the uh, longer focal length um 67 mil um and it just gets you a bit further into the scene um so you don't need to um think about the foreground as much um and again going to the wider end as soon as you start shooting wider with landscapes um, you want to start thinking about your foreground. People think, oh, I need a really wide lens. Uh, and I'll come on to wide angle lenses in a minute. 
but um, you need to start putting something into the foreground, otherwise it can become quite a, um, you know, your eye can wander around the, around the picture. Um, another good um, size lens, which is a great walkabout lens, is a, is a 24 to 105. Um, Canon do them, Nikon do them. So on your crop sensor, that would be what, um, 18 to uh, about 85. 85 yeah something like that yeah canon, a, do, canon do a 17 to 85 i think yeah and on your micro four thirds it'd be a 12 to 50. <coughs> um so again you know this is shot at the longer end 76 mil and it um the longer you go it it people say it compresses the um the perspective i'm not sure that's true um and i'm sure people cleverer than me would tell you what it actually does do but um it tends to make layers in an image look um look closer together um but the longer end of a lens you know it helps you get into the detail of a, a shot where stuff's a little bit further away again 83 mil on the same lens <coughs> um and if you're shooting down valleys this is at 100 mil uh, again it's picking out detail now you know i have got shots of that scene which were a lot wider but actually of of that sort of half an hour shooting um that came out quite nicely because it although it's a shoot in a valley it's um it's picking up the detail of the light rays and the light on the ground um, i notice it's a tiff have you put it through something else as well laid uh that's been in photoshop yeah so i i generally edit in lightroom um to start with and then i'll i'll do some um some tweaks to it in um in photoshop afterwards I'm kind of surprised at your f-stop. I thought you'd have a, a smaller f-stop than that. Was that because of the light? Uh, no, it's because of the focal length. So at 100 mil, um, at f6.3, everything's going to be in focus. And, and um, one of the things I use, and it's uh, very useful in landscape photography, is a depth of field calculator, uh, an app on your phone. Um, and people often think, you know, oh, you need to shoot at small apertures. Um, but um, I see people shoot, <laughs> I see even professionals, I see pictures in magazines at uh, F19 and F22. And, you know, you really don't need to shoot um, with those kind of apertures for landscapes. Um, because actually what you're going to do is you're going to start introducing um, diffraction into the image. Mm -hmm which is, is going to make the edges of your, uh, make your edges a bit, um, I wouldn't say fuzzy, but it'll make, start making them soft. Um, you can, you can very easily find out the sharpest aperture of any lens just by looking it up on the internet. I think DXO, um, do, uh, tests on just about every lens. Um, so, um, I mean, my common sort of, that one's an F9 for, uh, a common um, aperture for me is uh, around f8, either side of f8. Yeah, so that, for me, that, yeah, for, for that kind of stuff. Yeah, and the wider you go, the more depth of field you get for the same aperture. So that's at f9, 16 mil, and there's rocks in the foreground, probably only a couple of meters away from me. But um, but I know the rocks are going to be in focus, probably because I've checked me. Um, depth of field uh, and calculator. I think it's, it's worth saying that if you're using a crop sensor you'll get even more depth of field for the same aperture alternatively you can open the lens up a little bit wider and if you're going to micro four thirds so I'd I'd get the same depth of field on my micro four thirds at about uh, uh, just over f4 so f4.5 something like that if you're using a, a crop sensor then f5.6 to f6.3 is going to give you the same sort of depth of field yeah perfect right so when I was talking about wide angle lenses, this is shot with the 1635 at the widest end at 16 mil. And you really do need, wide angle lenses are all about the, fore, well, they're not all about the foreground, but you, you must have an interesting foreground. Um, otherwise it's, it's just not gonna work with a wide angle lens. Um, again, this is 16 mil. And again, I've got something in the foreground. I've got some reeds, which hopefully lead your eye into the shot of it. Um, the other thing with landscape photography that you need to try and do is simplify things and have separation between the elements. This 
example here, I haven't quite got separation. If you look at the reeds in the foreground and the reflection of the trees, they overlap a bit. Um, and unless I had a pair of step ladders and stuck it in the water, I wasn't going to be able to get high enough. But um, ideally, you want your elements of the image to be separated. Um, again, shot at the wide side, wide end of a of a wide angle lens. And again, these uh, rocks just in front of me—they're probably only about two meters away from me. And again, still only shooting at f9, but I know that everything's going to be in focus. So your depth of field calculator will tell you what your hyperfocal distance is. And your hyperfocal distance is the point at which the most uh, the most distance will be in focus, if that makes sense. So basically your hyperfocal distance will tell you that if you focus, for example, at five meters, everything from two meters to infinity will be in focus. Um, and if your foreground's so close, then that you can't get everything in focus, then you have to start using other techniques, which I won't bore you with just at the moment. But it comes back to what we were talking about in macro, which is um, focus stacking. Um, so going the other way, uh, another good lens for landscapes is a long, longer lens, mid-range telephoto lens. So this is with a 7200 at 124 mil. And it's useful for picking out detail in, um, in a landscape. So this is a scene, you know, there's big mountains all around, but I've picked out the light and a few of the mountains. Um, but equally, you can use it for it, what I call intimate landscapes. So this is just a shot of some bluebells in a wood, um, shot at 120 mil. Uh, and the bluebells are probably only about two meters away from me there. Um, but you were asking about um, apertures. I've deliberately shot at F5 there. So I've got a narrow depth of field and it means that the trees and everything in the background is blurred, which is deliberate so that your eye is focused on the, on the um, bluebells. Um, again, exactly the same thing. I saw this was just the other night and there's a rape seed field and I happened to see these white flowers. I've no idea what they are. And I thought, oh, I'll see if I can get a shot of those. And again, F3.5, so really narrow, uh, really wide aperture giving a really narrow depth of field and it's pretty much picked out the flowers and a band of the yellow flowers the rapeseed um, and everything else is out of focus um, so that's lenses um, so there is no best lens whatever lens you've got is fine for landscapes Okay, so that's Adrian's take on what is the best lens for landscape photography. And a bit like the question, what is the best camera? The answer is, it's whichever lens you've got with you. So I hope you found that useful. I'm going to be running a free workshop shortly on how to make money from photography. And we'll be looking at, if, if landscape photography is your thing, we'll be looking at how you can make money from landscape photography. So keep your eye open for that. Make sure you don't miss out. See you soon. Bye for now.